probably. <laughs> okay, we're going to get this uh, meeting started. Quickly call in attendance. Supervisors Fisher, Aguizio, Fleer, Cassiola, and Savavik are in attendance, as well as our township manager, our township assistant manager, who will be back up, our chief of police, Sean Bukovinsky. Just to get things going, we're going to stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Miss Cohen, if you could be seated, I'm going to read a little statement and then you'll be, then we'll take any comment from the public. Miss Cohen. Ms. Cohen, please be seated, and as soon as I'm done, we will. Please be seated, and as soon as I read this, we will go through um, public comment. Public comment will be accepted at that point, yes. <clears throat> Thank you for coming this evening to the public workshop. Before we begin, I want to lay some ground rules for how this meeting will be run. First, we will consider the public comment for changes to our International Fire Code, and as well as our sections to the Unified Development Ordinance pertaining to work hours. Finally, we will open public comment on our oil and gas ordinance. As you can see, there are a lot of people in attendance tonight, and in order to be fair to township residents, public comment on our oil and gas ordinance will be limited first to Cecil township residents. After all township residents have had an opportunity to be heard, we will then open comments to parents of children who will attend or have attended Cannon McMillan schools that are located inside Cecil township. After those individuals have had time to speak, I will allow other individuals outside of township to be heard if time allows. The board will allow public comment tonight until 10 p.m. Address all your comments to the board and not to the audience or individual audience members or groups of people. As there are a lot of people in attendance and there is a limited amount of time to speak, we ask that you be respectful of your fellow residents and make your point as quickly as possible. The board wants to allow as many people the opportunity to speak this evening as possible. The board reserves the right to ask anyone speaking to wrap up their comments at any point. If at any point during this meeting anyone is raising their voice, speaking out of turn, being disrespectful, or generally causing problems, you will be asked to sit down and or asked to leave the building. No changes will be made or voted on this evening. This meeting is simply to hear what our residents have to say. Tonight is only for public comment. Do not expect the board to answer specific questions. Do not expect the solicitor to answer specific questions. We are here to listen to you, our residents. If there is any change to the oil and gas ordinance in the future, understand that this does not apply to any previously approved well pads. <coughs> as previous approvals are grandfathered under our current ordinance. If there is a change to the oil and ga gas ordinance in the future, the board would follow all required processes, including advertisements and hearings on any specific ordinance changes, and the public would have another opportunity to be heard. So very quickly, as I'm guessing none of you are here for this, I want to first open up anybody who wants to have public comment on the fire code ordinance or sections of the unified development ordinance pertaining to work hours. Don't everyone run to the microphone at once. Okay, since there's not, we are going to move on to comments about our oil and gas ordinance. I ask this. We don't have a sign-in sheet, so please just step to the microphone. I'm going to ask you to state your name and address for the record. That's simply so that we know who you are and where you live. And I'm going to ask you to limit your comments to a reasonable amount of time. I'm sure there's a lot of people here that want to be heard. Um, who wants to be first? Jamie. I'm going to still ask that you speak into the microphone. Go ahead. My name is Diane Ritz Nicolella. I live at 4000. Question. Go ahead, Anna. Go ahead. My question to you, uh, Chairman Fisher, was why is Gretchen, our, our attorney, Gretchen Moore, not. Can you make, Jack, can you make sure that? 
Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, I'm concerned why Gretchen Moore, our attorney, because the last meeting she uh, uh, said to us that she would do some research and review the oil and gas fire code and work on Sunday and report her findings to us. So she's not here tonight. So my question is, why is Gretchen Moore not here? So as I said at first, this is for us to listen to you. There will be a meeting where Gretchen is available to answer any questions. She has provided to this board summaries that we have received and had the opportunity to read on all three ordinances. We have them. I have them. I have mine here. Um, and this is Jordan. He is from her. You want to introduce yourself? And it wasn't anything personal against you, sir, either. Oh, that's okay. We've never it's met. It's not meant personal. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Uh, sure, um, you've heard worse, huh? Uh, I have, I have yeah, heard worse. Yeah. Um, my name is Jordan Strasberger. I'm an attorney. Gretchen and I are partners uh, at the law firm of Strasberger McKenna, Gutnick Kangevsky, and she had a conflict this evening, uh, making it impossible for her to be here. So I am here in her stead, um, and I'm here to listen to your comment. Wait a we minute, are... Dawn, I, I got read an email from you that Gretchen said uh, that she was told not to be here. I didn't know anything about a conflict. No, it was a conflict. She, she couldn't make the... She couldn't make today. Talk she, in here, Michael. That email said she said uh, they do not want me to attend, right? Who didn't want her to attend? She had questioned whether the board wanted her to attend or not, and then she told me that it didn't matter because she said, I have a conflict anyway. And to, here, I'll read the email. She all, Okay, we're not going to get into this, but I will tell you that she had advised the board that at this point, this is a process. She did not feel that it was necessary, to which I agreed, for her to be here during the public comment section. There will be... We are not going to, if we, if we even make any changes, we are not making these changes tonight. We are not making them overnight. There will be a meeting in which she presents her findings. There will be board discussion at that point, and we can move on. This meeting is only so the residents, so you as residents have an opportunity to present how you feel to us. We would be here for seven hours if we did everything in one meeting. That's all this is. So if I understand you correct, Gretchen will be at our next board meeting to answer these questions? The, I'm the not review. committing that she will be there to answer our questions. She, she actually will not be at our next board meeting. Well, at you what will point be, in time will time. we get this? <laughs> there will be a point in time where our solicitor, Gretchen Moore, will be available to answer questions. Having said that, I have the utmost confidence in Mr. Strasburger, who's sitting right here, I'm that a if we- pretty decent attorney. <laughs> <laughs> that if we have a, a concern or something that needs to be sorted out, that he can handle it, okay? You know, it's not that I'm questioning your ability. I, I know attorney. you aren't, ma'am. It's okay, just that enough. Gretchen had okay. supposedly done the review and the research. And, and we, we have that. Answers. And, and we'll find out from Gretchen why, why she wrote that. Right. You we will be it. here. All right. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Go ahead. I apologize. Again, my name is Diane Ritz Nicolala, 4004, Sir James Drive in Windsor Woods. Um, from the Environmental Health Project, I have some information that I'd like to pass on to you, and um, Lisa will give you so that you can read it along with me and you'll have it so that you can ingest it while you're making your decisions. All shale gas infrastructure emits toxins into the ambient air. These toxins dissipate as they travel further from the source, but may be concentrated in the vicinity of the source or travel as a plume with wind or air movement. It is therefore important to establish a setback distance between the shale gas and infrastructure in buildings occupied by people or locations where people gather, like playgrounds, parks, and community centers. Current established state setbacks do not take public health into account. Special consideration in the form of greater setbacks should be in place for high occupancy buildings that house vulnerable populations and or are difficult to evacuate, such as schools, daycare hospitals, nursing homes, or neighborhoods with only one egress for 200 families, which is what Windsor Woods is, where we live. It's vital to know the plan of the full build-out of the shale gas infrastructure in your community because when the, DA, when the Pennsylvania DEP permits shale gas infrastructure, it does not take into account aggregate air emissions. This is particularly important in southwest Pennsylvania as the topography is very hilly. Polluted air settles and concentrates as the air cools 
such as in the evening. This is made much worse when air inversions, which are now occurring more frequently, and if you live in an area with multiple well pads and or compression stations or processing plant and combined emissions from multiple sources, it may result in higher unhealthy exposures. Windsor Woods does have uh, lower streets where a lot of single family homes with children live. Over time, these exposures may cause long-term health problems. Keep in mind also that shale gas operators can enlarge compressors and processing plants. These can both become super emitters, high volume polluters, even if they were not at the start. It is so it's important to learn in advance where these are going to be located and if there are any long-term plans to increase the size or capacity. Number three, ground level ozone is a serious problem in areas of shale gas development. When emissions combine with sunlight, ground level ozone affects lung health and aggregates, aggravates asthma, potentially causing damage to lung tissue. Controlling or limiting the emissions from the infrastructure should include frequent inspections to make sure the equipment is operating properly and it's essential. Shale gas development waste is another serious concern. Presently, it is exempt from federal environment, environmental legislation. So that it is highly toxic. It contains radionuclides. It can be transported and disposed of as residual waste, not toxic waste, in the form of liquid, sludge, and solids. Toxins in the waste can be carried by water, as it is trans the transport methods which is most commonly used in the fracking process. The waste potentially has been exposed to chemicals used in fracking and contains salts, which are brine, radioactive materials, inorganic and organic compounds, and various gases that are present in the shale. Because the waste is toxic, it should be handled as such to protect public health. It may contain radium-226 and 228, which are present in the shale. Radium-226 is an alpha emitter, water-soluble, and a serious risk if ingested or inhaled, such as dust. Once ingested and inhaled, radium is treated by the body as if it is calcium, and it's stored in the bones. Shale gas waste, which is relabeled as brine, should never be used to de-ice or suppress dust on roads. This causes radium to collect in the environment. It can then wash into waterways and become airborne when the road dries. Endocrine disturbing chemicals are present in shale gas emissions and waste and are a serious health concern. The endocrine system determines how hormones function in the body. They regulate growth, development of children, reproduction, and aging. Most vulnerable are the feces and developing children. Endocrine disturbing chemicals can block and substitute for chemicals the body is expecting, causing long-term health impacts. This is why it's vital to regulate and control emissions from shale gas infrastructure and monitor where and how waste is transported and disposed. Since water is a major required resource for this industry, it's important to consider local rules pertaining to the water withdrawals from surface waters and municipal supplies. Can the trucks carry fresh water and waste on different trips? Are the lines used to collect water from surface waters required to be cleaned from contamination? And note that pipes, trucks, and other equipment may have built up layers of radioactive scale from transporting shale gas and shale gas waste. Emergency responders are in risk for re responding to accidents involving shale gas development infrastructure and transportation. Many of the chemicals used in the process or in the waste can become airborne and can be absorbed through the skin. In addition, waste and chemicals being hauled to and from shale gas sites can spill or leak and can be otherwise released into the environment in the event of an accident. Emergency responders should be trained in the knowledge of what chemicals they have encountered and in what procedures to follow to decontaminate themselves and their equipment before returning home, where they may pass along the contaminants to family members. Diane, you've been speaking for five minutes at this point, so I'm gonna ask that you wrap up and let somebody else have the opportunity to speak. Um, this is 
a recommendation from the Environmental Health uh, Project for, to increase the setback distance from 500 feet to 3,281 feet. It's six-tenths of a mile from any structure, a home, a residential home, or a school. This would mean the people who live nearby are 20 to 40 times less likely to be exposed to dangerous shale gas emissions. And one more thing, I, I won't read it, but I want you to take a look at this. This has a map that shows um, the municipalities in Washington County with the highest emissions. They are highlighted in yellow, and they are just to the west of us. There are 346 shale gas facilities spread throughout Washington County, and this is from um, 2018. Washington County saw 106 new shale gas wells drilled in 2018. In 2017 in Washington Diane, County. If you we can read this, like I said, just to, cause there are a lot of people that wanna speak, if you could just wrap up and then, if okay. th 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 there's time at the end, you can come back and. Okay, thank you. Last, I'm gonna leave you a picture of what the Wa Augustine gas site looks like. Lisa, please understand that nothing, if any changes are made, I, nothing. I know, I know, but we don't want anybody. You've got f almost 400 people that are going to be building in Traditions of America, and we don't want this in their backyard because they're going to be 55 and over like most of us are. Okay. Understand. <laughs> Kara Sheridan, 58 North to Poly Road. I have a short statement and then some things I want to hand to you as well. Uh, there are a variety of arguments to be made regarding why it is important for Cecil Township to update it, its oil and gas ordinance. Uh, some of them are related to health concerns like we just discussed, but I'm going to stick to the topic around zoning. So we often hear arguments such as, we cannot update our ordinance in this way or that way because we'll be sued by big oil and gas companies. We hear arguments such as we should put a full out ban or moratorium on fracking across the board. I argue that I don't think it's possible for either of these stances um, to be reasonable and that we rather use facts and information to drive our discussion. First and foremost, let's discuss the Pennsylvania Municipalities Code. As the supervisors are aware, the MPC is the backbone for local government. A rule book which is used to help guide municipalities on establishing sound, legal, local legislation as it relates to the planning and development and the general topic of zoning. The purpose of the MTC is stated in section 105. It basically, it's a very long sentence, if anybody has read it, it's like the longest run on sentence in all time. But to me, it translates into, it's the responsibility of local government to protect and promote the safe, health, safety, health, and morals while providing guidance on how development should occur allowing for all types of development throughout the township. In contrast, the Pennsylvania Constitution prohibits, governance, pr prohibit, prohibits governments from passing special laws for a single industry, which is exactly what oil and gas overlay maps are doing. To dive a little deeper into zoning as it currently stands within Cecil Township, there are 12 zoning districts, four residential, three commercial, light and heavy industrial, as well as some special, a special development district, a business, uh, park planned uh, residential development, and uh, park athletic and residential zoning districts. Currently as it stands, oil and gas development is allowed in virtually all of the zoning districts. It's not allowed in R3 or C3, but honestly that's just because of how small they are and the fact that there wasn't enough space. The current oil and gas overlay map is from 2011. There are entire neighborhoods and many homes which have been constructed since 2011, which are not reflected on the map. Furthermore, Oil and gas overlay maps are not recommended in general because they effectively are in direct conflict and incompatible with the underlying zoning of the property. With all that said, what is my counterpoint to the statement we need to allow it everywhere? Well, originally in 2012 that was true. Under the Corbett administration, there was legislation called Act 13 that mandated just that. Many townships did exactly what Cecil did, created these oil and gas overlay maps. Since Act 13 has been overturned, there have been at least three cases where the PA Supreme Court has stated outright that oil and gas development is an industrial use. I have the references for you and I'll send them to you. This is why many of our neighboring townships, such as South Fayette, P 
Peters, and Bell Acres, as well as Jefferson Hills, which is in progress, are looking to allow oil and gas development only in compatible zones, such as light industrial, heavy industrial, and in some cases, commercial. I'm of the opinion that they are doing this because it allows for, it prevents an incompatible use in a zoning district, which is in effect a violation of citizens' rights. Cecil Township's current zoning ordinance states that the intent of a residential district is to protect residential areas against the hazards of fire, offensive noise, vibration, smoke, odors, glare, and other objectionable influences, and to protect residential neighborhoods from heavy or through, uh, through traffic. This is in our ordinance, section 109, C and E respectively. Can anyone in this room definitively claim that unconventional gas development does not produce noise vibration, glare, or incompatible traffic patterns. Finally, there are several townships in the area have not only revised their ordinances and approved them through their local councils of supervisors, but these ordinances have also been approved through county as well, Washington County and Allegheny County. I'm going to provide for your reference uh, a couple of oil and gas ordinances which seem to do a good job of putting numerous adequate protections in place for your reference Indiana Township, Bell Acres, and Oakmont Borough. These are examples that are only a subset. There are other neighboring townships, including South Fayette and Peters, who have also afforded these additional protections to their citizens. In closing, I'd like to encourage the Board of Supervisors, as it is their duty to protect all residents' rights, to consider revising the oil and gas ordinance to af afford further protections to the citizens residing in residential zones from the effects of oil and gas development. There are many ways to enact this legislation to protect residents, and I would like to implore you to look at all the tools at your disposal to protect both individual residents as well as the township as a whole. Thank you. Good evening. This makes it a little challenging when you're vertically challenged. <laughs> you can actually take the microphone out and hold it if that's easier. It just slot, you have to pull it. Sorry. You know what? I'll just hold it this way. Thanks. My name is Diana Irie Vaughn, and I am a new resident of Cecil Township, residing at um, 1009 Springhouse Drive, and the chairman of the board of the Washington County Commissioners. I thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight and provide my perspective on this very important issue. With a diverse economy and sustained growth, Washington County has been a leader in Western Pennsylvania over the past decade in job creation and economic development activity. The natural gas industry has played a significant role in this growth, and Cecil Township has been at the epicenter of this positive economic activity. South Point Business Park, located in Cecil Township, is home to several corporate and regional headquarters for this industry. Leading companies like Range Resources, EQT, Mark West, CNX, Equitrans, and DTE Energy, just to name a few. This does not even begin to take into account the affiliated oil field service and professional services providers that work directly with and for the natural gas industry. The word game changer is an oft overused cliche but in this case, it may be an understatement in describing the discovery and development of the Marcellus shale gas. The jobs and tax revenue created from this industry are very significant to both this township and Washington County. In addition, this revolution in shale gas drilling over the past decade has made the United States a leader in global natural gas production, with Pennsylvania the second leading gas producing state and Washington County second in the state for wells drilled. It is accurate to say that we are a leader in the cause of energy independence. We in Cecil Township are home to several leaders in an industry that has made our country more secure and less reliant on fragile regimes or unpredictable dictators in the Middle East and elsewhere. As the wife of retired Colonel Robert Vaughn, who has served seven mobilizations with the U.S. Army Reserves, this issue has a special meaning for me and my family. As a Cecil Township resident and a county commissioner, I've seen firsthand how the development of natural gas can enhance our natural resources and support the economics of our local communities. In addition to family sustaining jobs, our citizens benefit from the increased use of natural gas through low electric and heating prices. Our municipalities and county also benefit from impact fees, which help to keep local taxes low 
and to further township improvement projects. Cecil Township has realized over $2 million from the impact fee alone since 2012. Washington County has benefited almost $50 million in the same time period. Pennsylvania's Independent Fiscal Office reported that Washington County is among the top counties in the state for natural gas royalty payments received by private landowners. The IFO estimates that Washington County landowners have received nearly $2 billion in royalty payments over the past decade. Resources that circulate through our local economy and bring additional business activity to Washington County. On top of economic and employment benefits realized by this industry, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania maintains one of the most comprehensive and stringent regulatory programs in the country governing natural gas development. Over the last 10 years, the Commonwealth has updated and enforced hundreds of statutes and regulations that protect our air, land, and water. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection permits and inspects all stages of the drilling and production process, including midstream and downstream aspects of collecting, refining, and selling natural gas. Beyond the state regulations, many of the companies I mentioned earlier are using best-in-class technologies and are pioneers in implementing industry-leading best practices that go beyond even what is required by the state. Should the board choose to revisit the current oil and gas ordinances in Cecil Township, I urge you to ensure that the final form is supportive of natural gas development and the mineral owner's constitutional right to develop the mineral rights on their property. I encourage the township to involve the natural gas industry as a partner, along with residents and other stakeholders, to gather input from all sides and reach a consensus that everyone can support. I'm sure there is common ground that can be found that will allow for safe and environmentally responsible natural gas drilling while also protecting and respecting the citizens of Cecil Township. I want to personally thank this board for conducting this hearing to hear from your residents. And uh, I wish you the best in your deliberations. And if the county can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to contact me. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kimberly Price, 1563 Network Drive. Uh, I have been a resident of Cecil Township now for uh, going on four years, um, more uh, a little bit more history there. I've been working in South Point for going on nine years. Um, I'm a proud uh, uh, neighbor uh, in here in Cecil Township, but I'm also a very proud member of the oil and gas industry uh, workforce. And I can echo what Diana said here this evening when she talked about what this industry is meant to our communities. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for oil and gas. And um, despite the fact that I know there are very passionate opinions in this room, I think it's safe to say that many of us wouldn't be here if it weren't for oil and gas and from a very functional standpoint. Um, the backbone of this local economy is the backbone of this local economy. I'm going to ask that you address the board. Oh, sure. Thank sure. you. Uh, the backbone of our local economy has been built on this industry over the course of the past decade and more. Um, and I think that uh, as, as a resident of Cecil Township, I want to ensure that uh, my voice is, is heard in um, support for this industry here. Um, there are uh, a, a, there's a lot that a municipality can do to ensure that oil and gas is developed responsibly and safely. And I've seen it done in many, many cases. Uh, as Diana was mentioning, uh, the development has been going on here for well over a decade, and it's been done safely. And we have some very uh, excellent operators here who want to bring that excitement to Cecil Township. And I hope that the township will welcome them and work collectively with them. Uh, it, as well as the communities at stake. So um, thank you for your time. And again, my name's Kim Price. Thank you. Hi, 
My name is Kevin Hoffman from 3005 Sir Charles Drive in the Windsor Woods neighborhood. Uh, I understand we can't ask questions to the board tonight, but I would ask you to please confirm some information I have so I can make sure it's accurate that 500 feet is the current setback for structures in Cecil Township, with the exception of two. Th can you, it, sometimes if you pull out the microphone and hold it, it's easier. There you go. The information I'd like confirmed just before I make my statement is that 500 feet is the current setback for structures in Cecil Township, with the exception of schools where that setback is 2,000 feet. That is correct. Thank you. I stood at this podium before. I'll address the board. Thank you. <laughs> and told you how I uh, moved here to Cecil Township with my wife. We put our life savings into a home. And then shortly after, found out about a fracking uh, operation in our backyard. I've been looking at these setbacks and reviewing the ordinances over the weekend and coming across this discrepancy between 500 feet for our homes versus 2,000 feet for our schools. And if I could ask the board a question, the question I would ask is why is that discrepancy there and what was the logic that went into it when it was first established? I can somewhat answer that. I mean, none, I should say none of us, only one person that currently sits on the board was on the board at the time that ordinance was written. So I don't think that there's any of us that could really answer that question, even if we wanted to. Okay. Just historically, there's not notes that would summarize why, why there is a discrepancy if you just want to continue with your remarks. So with that discrepancy, again, 2,000 feet for schools, 500 feet for our homes, I looked into why, or how long do our children actually spend in school. And the truth is that in their first 18 years of life, they spend about 16,380 school hours on school campuses. That sounds like a lot. And that may help explain why we have larger setbacks for schools to protect our children our most vulnerable population in the place where they spend a lot of time. We look at the bigger picture. That number of school hours is only 16% of their waking hours, between 0 and 18 years old. That means the other 84% of children's time is spent out of the school, mainly at home, where they are far more likely to spend time outside breathing that air after school hours on the weekends and during summers. I'd also urge you to consider the early developmental years before school begins when our toddlers, infants, newborns, and expectant mothers spend most time at home. On that note, please also consider our elderly, whose immune systems are also more susceptible to air, pol air pollutants and spend the majority of their time in their homes. And I'll conclude with saying that if we believe that 2,000 feet is an adequate setback to protect the most vulnerable of our population, then why should we not accept anything less than 2,000 feet for the structures where this very same vulnerable population spends the vast majority of their lives, and that is their homes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tim Walker, and I'm a 50 plus year resident of Cecil Township. My wife, Patty, and I raised our children for 37 years out Could on you? Racing, yeah, Racing Road. Okay, sorry about that. No problem. I just want to make sure everybody can hear. Um, and I am a leaseholder, so I'll, uh, I'll state that. I'll provide that information. I come here today as a resident to share my thoughts and opinion on the subject of Marcellus drilling. For the record, I would like to ask, and I understand the question thing, uh, I'd like to ask what prompted this review or this, this actual workshop uh, for the ordinance review. I mean, how did this all? I can't, I mean, I can answer that question, although I'll cut into your time speaking. Okay. Um, I was. Quick, make it quick then. I'll talk quick. <laughs> I, you know, I recently took over as chairperson. Um, a lot of our ordinances haven't review, been reviewed in a lot of time. So I had a conversation with several people, our township manager, and said, what are the top three complaints of ordinances that we get the most complaints on? Oil and gas, working, construction work on Sundays, Fire code ordinance. Okay, That's very good, I'm very good, thank you. I'm sure all of you have electricity that comes into your homes. That allows you to live comfortably in that home. And I'm sure some of you also have gas heat that you use, uh, or gas that you use for heat and cooking. Uh, with that said, I would like to ask a simple question. What do you think makes that possible, and where do you think these resources come from? The answer to that question is they come from where they exist. And 
I'm happy to say that they exist in abundance here in southwestern PA and specifically in Cecil Township. I understand that everybody likes to enjoy the comforts of these resources provided, but they want to do this with no inconvenience to them or their surrounding area, not in my backyard, put it in theirs. As I previously mentioned, this in, in not always practical, or po as I previously mentioned, this is not always practical or possible because of where the resources they, uh, are. When I spoke before this board last time, I explained how I can relate to how some of these residents feel as I feel the same way about residential development, toll roads, and et cetera in the township. That's, that's what some call progress. Also, although some would argue that urban sprawl has its benefits, with homeowners and commercial ventures that move into the area and often provide additional revenue to local, gover to local governments in the form of property taxes and sales taxes. However, such development often pro produces drains on local environmental resources, shifts an economic burden, burden of development to longtime residents, increases car dependency and energy costs, and diminishes the overall community's character. I do find it ironic that a person or a family would move to Cecil Township with what I assume is to be their quest to live in a rural community with farms, green fields, nature, but at the same time contribute to the destruction of these same sought after features within our township to much more permanent and greater extent than a well pad. On the subject of taxes, uh, Commissioner Ira, uh, Ira Vaughn touched on this, uh, the residents have not complained about the roughly $2 million in impact fees they have received or the additional tax revenue that's obtained from leaseholder signing bonuses and or royalties. I've done some research. I've done, I've done some research and came up with some very rough estimates of, of roughly 40% of the 16,000 acres in Cecil Township currently under lease. I do not believe it is right or fair that the township eliminate the industry from tapping this much needed and available resource, while at the same time depriving land and mineral owners from obtaining revenue from their investments. I feel range the residents and state regulatory agencies have evolved over time. Along with this, range has tried to be a good neighbor and has gone out of the way to work with all parties. We cannot and should not eliminate drilling in the township, which I believe is, is the goal what could be the goal of, of the board and or some of the residents. The landowners with mineral rights, mineral rights need represented equally. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is uh, Nicole Recito and I live at 1524 High Road in Jefferson Hills, Pennsylvania. Um, if you're not a Cecil Township resident, we're only accepting comments at this You're time. only accepting comments. I just, yeah. um, at, uh, at the end of the meeting, if there's time, we'll allow. I'm a newly elected council person over there. So matter. all I wanted to do was open the lines of communication between our boroughs. I, I appreciate it. And we'll, we can get your information. Thank you. Michelle Stonemark, 40 North DePauly. Um, I have a brief statement I'm going to read first, and then I'm going to kind of, you know, go off a little bit, so, on my own. Um, one thing that I want the board to keep in mind is that we are not the only community that is facing this issue of should we update our oil and gas ordinance. We have not, we are not alone in this. There are communities who have done before it. They, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. These communities have invested time and money into their important ordinance updates, and we should use them as a basis for our own township updates. And I appreciate Commissioner being here this evening, but as she's aware and other people are aware, that these ordinances have been going through the county, public the county planning commissions and have been approved. So we need to make sure that we are taking these other communities' ordinances into consideration as well and using them as a sort of blueprint going forward. I just think it's something that I want you guys all to keep in mind. And with that, I do have a copy of a, a recent ordinance that was passed in Indiana Township, which is in Allegheny County. And some of the things that I really liked about this ordinance were the studies that they required prior to any application being approved. 
they required a traffic study, a noise management plan, an environmental impact analysis, an air quality study, a hydrological study, a pre-development and post-development soil testing study. These are the kind of things that we need to have in place so not only to prepare residents surrounding the well pad, but it'll also have a base, give us a baseline of what is currently there prior to, to the commencement of any oil and gas operations, which is gonna do nothing except protect this township from any kind of negligence. Some of the other things that I enjoyed about that, and I think is, will go also to the purpose of protecting the township, which is really what we're here to do, is pr protect the health, safety, and welfare of the township. And I wanna keep reminding you guys of that, that you are elected by the residents. You are elected by the residents to protect their health, safety, and welfare. That is primarily your job. So with that being said, some of the other, some of the other parts of this ordinance that I really liked, and let me flip to that page. They require an insurance policy on their well pad. Now I'm pretty sure that we require range to have, well, there's for the well pad that I'm familiar with, we require them to have a million dollar insurance policy, indemnity policy that indemnifies and express negligence. I mean, you can read through it. I'm gonna give you guys all a copy of it. But this township requires 25 million so that when something happens and, and it requires 25 million per site, not just per, not as a total, whereas I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that Cecil Township currently requires $1 million per operator. And like I said, that might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware of, that's what it is. This is $25 million per occurrence. So meaning that anything that would come through, that an accident that would happen, any kind of natural, any kind of disaster that would happen that their insurance didn't cover, it wouldn't be up to the taxpayers to pick up the rest of the bill. They'd be required to up to $25 million. Something else that I really liked, and I think, you know, with everything that's been going on around our house that I really liked about this is that the conditional use approval is non-transferable without consent from the Board of Supervisors and automatically terminates unless extended and if drilling is not commenced within a year from the approval. Because within the two years that Range applied for the, made their application here in Cecil Township, 250 homes went in. And it shouldn't, vast changes were made to that area where it was. It's important that they are, lim, they, we, are we put limitations on what they're allowed to do and the time frame they're allowed to do it. And believe me, I know that it, it seems like everybody wants to either drill baby drill or they want to, you know, get rid of it altogether. And I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting we put in reasonable requirements that protect the residents, not that protect range, that protect the residents. I have one more. Michelle, if you could wrap up, you've been speaking for almost five minutes. If you I think I'm almost done anyway. Just let me check my notes. Oh, I have one more thing. So then I'll wrap it up. The other thing and the final thing I'll talk about is that they have is that they require a full infrastructure plan before anything is anything is drilled, meaning that if there's going to be any kind of pipelines or processing, they get a full infrastructure plan prior to the commencement of any operations in the township. So that in itself gives you a big picture because now we have this. So they come in and say, well, we have to, we have to do this and this and this because we already put the pad up there. It's important that we hold their feet to the fire, so to speak, so that we know what their plan is from day one, what their full, big, overall comprehensive plan is. And I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Just don't. Thank you. Hi, my name is Janice Blanock, and I live at 16 Jupiter Drive in Cecil. I've been a resident for 25 years, and I'd like to read something. Um, actually, 
it was read a little bit earlier, but I'm going to repeat it because I think it's very important. Shale gas development waste, shale gas development waste is of serious concern. It is exempt from, far, from federal environmental legislation so that it is highly toxic and contains radionuclides. It can be transported and disposed as, of as residual waste in the form of liquid, sludge, or solids. Toxins in the waste can be carried by water, as it is in the transport method most commonly used by the fracking process. The waste potentially has been exposed to chemicals used in fracking and contains salt, otherwise known as brine, radioactive materials, inorganic and organic compounds, and various gases that are present in the shale. Because the, radi because the waste is toxic, it should be handled to protect public health. It may contain radium-226 and 228, which are present in the shale. Radium-226 is an alpha emitter, water-soluble, solu and a serious health risk if ingested or inhaled, often as dust. Once ingested or inhaled, radium is treated, and I want you to understand this last sentence, radium is treated by the body as if it was calcium and stored in the bones. My son died from a rare, a rare form of um, bone, pediatric bone cancer, Ewing sarcoma, along with 28 other children in the green Washington Fayette and Washington counties in the last 10 years. That is not okay. So I wonder how much money, what, what dollar amount, Commissioner, can you put on the loss of a child? You people were elected here to protect our citizens, and you better damn well do it. I'd also like to give you an invitation to accept one of our Frackland tours where you can see the effect of fracking on communities and neighborhoods and families and children, and you tell me that it's safe. You tell me. My name is Lauren Anderson. I'm at 1559 Network Drive, where my family and I have lived for 10 years now. I want to talk about compliance. Pennsylvania, as we heard before, maintains one of the most comprehensive and stringent regulatory programs in the country govern governing natural gas development. In addition to enforcing numerous statutes and regulations, the Pennsylvania DEP also oversees inspections and compliance over the industry. The PADEP currently has the second largest full-time inspection staff that oversees the industry in the Commonwealth, second to only to Texas. These inspectors routinely come out to developing and producing unconventional Marcellus well sites. In 2019, the DEP completed uh, uh, almost 20,000 inspections of unconventional Marcellus well sites. According to the DEP reported uh, data, the industry had a compliance rate of 94.9%. The number of inspections in 2019 was the largest of any year since the unconventional Marcellus development, and the compliance rate of the last three years has been greater than 93% each, each of the last three years. The level of compliance this industry is achieving given the number of inspections and oversight by the state is commendable. As a resident, I understand that DEP's mission is to protect the environment and to make sure companies developing natural gas from the Marcellus Shale follows regulations, adheres to permits, and minimizes impacts. Um, <clears throat> I urge the board, uh, as they review uh, the current oil and gas ordinances, to also to, to partner not, not only with the residents here in Cecil, uh, but to also use the Pennsylvania DEP as a resource uh, from a compliance standpoint and to understand what the state already does regulate uh, when looking at what uh, the local ordinances uh, should uh, be updated to. And I look forward to working with the township uh, as they go through this process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ed Jarris. I'm at uh, 4027 Sir James Drive in Windsor Woods. 
Um, I want to read something real quickly here from uh, for the Center for Coalfield Justice. Article 1, Section 27. Article 1 of the Pennsylvania Constitution represents an, exp an express statement by the people of their fundamental rights. Thus, Section 27, which is rooted in the Commonwealth's specific history, sets forth fundamental rights. By their presence in Article 1, the rights protected by Section 27 are on par with the other rights in Article 1. These other rights include, of course, the right to free speech and the press, the rights to worship as one pleases, the individual rights to privacy. Um, Section 27 identifies two district distinct yet related fundamental rights and corresponding duties. The first sentence of Section 27 tells the people that they have a fundamental right to clean air, pure water, and the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and ethnic values of the environment. In turn, the first sentence imposes a corresponding duty of the part of the Commonwealth, including Cecil Township, to refrain from infringing or violating those rights through governmental actions that unreasonably cause actual or likely deterioration of those environmental features. The second sentence of Section 27 tells people that it is a fundamental right that Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. This unambiguously establishes that the people of Pennsylvania own the public natural resources, not the Commonwealth. The third sentence of Section 27 tells people that it is the fundamental right that, as trustee of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain these resources for the benefit of all the people. The third sentence of Section 27 creates a public trust. The people understand that as a provision in the Constitution, Section 27 limits how government can act, no matter the agency or the level of the branch of government. And in such a limitation, the people can seek vindication of these rights through the appropriate channels, through Section 27. And other rights of Article 1, the people have the final say directly over the government to which they delegated the authority to act on their behalf in the first place. So basically, um, you know, as a resident of, of uh, Cecil Township, I'm a little discouraged by what's, what's happened and that it already is in process. Um, that's why there's so many people here tonight uh, to view their point and to say we oppose this so if you okay if you could thank you thank you sorry good evening darlene barney Route 980 Cannonsburg, been four generations in this township, and I live very close to one of the wells that were put in Cecil Township over 10 years ago. And as far as I'm concerned, I feel right now that if we stop, and there's a lot of benefits to oil and gas activity here in Cecil Township. We can't turn a blind eye to Range, Mark West, or others who would like to operate here. They are committed to being good neighbors. If you take action that would prohibit or hurt oil and gas activity in this township, I expect we would have a battle. They are here. They have been in communication with the township throughout their operations. I think we owe it to ourselves and to our taxpayers to see things worked out so the residents, the industry, the township can come together for the betterment of this community. I think we need to listen to the industry, thoughts, and know that their work here can help us not have tax increases in Cecil Township. And that is coming if we do something that is not going to be profitable for us here in Cecil. 
I was on the work group for the comprehensive plan. Let's have a work group that includes discussions with the industry. I think we need to listen to the industry's thoughts and know that their work here can help us not have tax increases in Cecil Township. <clears throat> Emotional or factual? A major issue is the impact of fracking on Pennsylvania's economy. What will it do to Cecil's? A fracking ban in Pennsylvania, according to a recent study, would cost a loss of 6, 600,000 jobs and a $261 billion hit on the economy in Pennsylvania. And I'm going to say it again. 600,000 jobs and a $261 billion hit on the economy in Pennsylvania. Let's think twice before we try and chase drilling out of Cecil Township. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikki Paulus. I live on Windcrest Drive, which is in the FLIR plan. Um, I just want to appeal to you from a moral standpoint of view. Let's pretend that we are not all landowners. Let's pretend we own this nice little block of suburbia and our nice little plans that we have saved you know, to move into and do a nicer neighborhood. Um, I would love to know if someone were to put a well pad 500 feet behind every single person here that is very pro um, oil and gas, which yes, we, we have to be able to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. We have to be able to have everything running, okay? I, it's great that a lot of people are working in this industry, but if we could just for a moment um, try to look at the other person's perspective with maybe those of us that are not making one penny off of the oil and gas um, in our neighborhood and try to think about the children that a lot of us are raising um, in the Cannon McMillan School District. Um, I would just like you to try to think of things from your moral point of view. What, what is correct? Is it okay for someone to have carcinogens and pollutants right in your backyard? Um, because I really think that if everyone were to try to look at this from that perspective, I don't think that we would have as many people here saying that it's okay to have a well pad 500 feet behind someone's, someone's back door. Um, the township should require, as it would in any other type of development, that operators file a master plan that depicts the anticipated placement of well pads and all permanent and temporary infrastructure needed to support a well pad within the township. Oil and gas operations are not fixed to a single location in the community. While other industrial and commercial land uses are fixed in place, oil and gas operations can grow within a given community. So we cannot, it would be like on McConnell, we're, we're building a brand new plan that I, I couldn't imagine that the supervisors would say, we're okay, we're just gonna put in a couple houses here and there. We're not really gonna plan any of this out. If we could even just try to think of it from that point of view, why would we go in without a plan? Why would anyone go in without some sort of plan? So we need to know um, what the plan is and what that infrastructure is going to look like so that people can make educated decisions, so that people like the people of Windsor Woods aren't, hey, let's go retire and have a patio home, not knowing that, unfortunately, they're going to have a well pad that is literally right in their backyard. They're thinking they're moving to Cecil, and having this nice, nice area to live in, nice and quiet, and, oh, sorry about that. We're going to block your street. <laughs> you can't even get into your street right now because uh, you, we can't, you can't get into your plan because we have a tractor trailer that's sitting at the end of the street. 
Um, so just want to throw that out there. If you could all just maybe just take this down a notch and just try to think like normal, everyday people. Would you want this in your backyard? And if so, um, if so what's the safest way to, to possibly do it? Thank you. Thank you. Any other township residents? Diane, there's still some people that haven't had the opportunity to speak. <laughs> Crystal Burt, Wind Dance Drive, Cecil. So there's been a lot of great points that were brought up here, and I think as the township supervisors, this has a lot. Um, you guys have a lot of decisions to make, but at the end of the day, I think you're hearing the echo of we're no, we're, we have to find a happy medium to how we can safely drill, how we can safely have it in our township, and we have the capability of putting those ordinances, and as Michelle referenced in the ordinances in Indiana County, there's a lot of examples of how we can do that, right? Um, the biggest thing for me is if the range resources is claiming they want to be such great neighbors and work with us, then if you're coming into our townships and our neighborhoods where our kids go to school, they play, then prove that through air quality testing that's monitored before and after, you're gonna prove that if there's nothing to hide, then they should be clearly from an outside secondary source not paid by from range resources, studies held that will prove that, then there's nothing to argue. At the end of the day, Cecil Township is on the map right now, that's having the highest cases of viewing sarcoma. Every time I think of Janice, I can't imagine one of my children having to go through that. And for Cecil to sit here and take any of this lightly when we have children dying over rare, that when I went to the cancer cluster meeting, just to refresh memories of statistics, because I'm a number person, there were six cases in the time period that they said, four of the six that were in Washington County were in Cannon Mac. Four of the six. You know what they said? That's not a cancer cluster because it's not a significant number. I, it was appalling that she basically said that not one life is statistically important. And that is what you guys have to understand. If, it ta if one more kid in Cecil Township gets this because we're not sure if we're doing this right, hold their feet to the fire. Make them prove that they're safe. Institute these additional setbacks and that's how you're going to get moving forward. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. My name is Bill Ursfeld. I live on 129. It might be easier if you hold the microphone. I'm sorry. And sorry, could you start again? I couldn't hear you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill Ursfeld. I live at 129 Park Lane Drive. And I just want to put this into the comment of the uh, public record. <laughs> Cecil Township is known as the best place in PA to Can raise you? a family. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, now. <laughs> I asked the board to seriously consider the Southwest Pennsylvania Environmental Health Project letter that was partially read in this meeting and it was cut off and dated February 24, 2002 that you have a copy of. Nowhere in the, uh, what I've read on it, it's all talking about prudent setbacks for health. Um, it's not saying not to develop the industry. It's saying that we should be prudent when we develop the industry. Um, one of the things we should uh, consider is that it's a comprehensive plan, that they just don't put a pad here under a permit and then uh, six months later they put one here. And we want to see a comprehensive plan. I, I can remember when they were developing um, um, South Point 2, they kept wanting to Every six months come in and develop another 500 feet of road. It's like, why don't you just give us the whole plan what you want to do and phase it in uh, in one shot. We need to see the whole comprehensive plan uh, in our ordinance. Um, and when we do that, if we decide to go with whatever you guys decide, um, if it's a thousand foot back, then we have to reverse engineering 
reverse engineer it for other ordinances. So I know that it should be like industrial and commercial properties only, but there's a lot of R2 residential property that is agricultural really, but it's, it's zoned R2, so they would meet the limits of the setbacks. But later on, when the landowners, they profit from having the wellhead on their property, and then they come back in, and then they want to sell off a piece of their property to profit again, because that's why it was considered R2 rather than ag, they get more money for it. Then those offsets for the development should be the same. So if it's a thousand, that's what you decide for the, the gas, it should be a thousand for when development comes in later, not say whatever that ordinance says is 500. So that's something you guys need to consider with other ordinances as well. Now I've been up, up in my neighborhood, pristine fields for like 20 years. And I've noticed lately that the air quality isn't as well, not all the time, but sometimes I'll smell something that's not, that shouldn't be there. It's not natural in the environment. So I don't know where that's coming from. So I noticed that the quality of that air is going down. And it's great that we have this gas and oil challenge to rewrite this ordinance, because if we didn't have this challenge, that means we wouldn't have the natural resources here in the first place. Now this natural resource is not gonna go away. It's in under our ground. And it's how you develop it. We should protect our health over the development. We should protect the health over any money. Not that we can't make a lot of money for our tax base and everything, but our health should come over that. And we should put the people over the profits. And let's keep Cecil Township the best place to raise a family at PA for our children, our grandchildren, and future generations. Thank you. Hello. My name is Rodney Archibald, 3013 Brookstone Drive. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Rodney Archibald. So uh, I agree. Um, I'm a hunter, I'm a fisher, um, I, I care about the environment. Um, I work on a farm uh, in my spare time on a neighboring, uh, in a neighboring township. It's just something that I love. I'm a member of Cecil Community. I have been for three years, and I reside in the township with my wife. Okay. I also, I'm an employee of Range Resources. Okay. I am the Vice President of Operations, and I oversee many of the operations involved in the production of natural gas uh, from all well sites in the state of Pennsylvania. No matter the township or county, um, our focus is on safety and environment, and that does not change. I have 228 people that report are in my reporting structure. Um, these, these individuals, every day, safety and environment is the first topic that we talk about every morning. Uh, we start every operation uh, with a safety meeting that confirms that everyone's on the same page, but also we want to ensure we do things, do things right and to where we can return, our families, return to our families the same way we left them. Um, our divisional headquarters are located here in Cecil. Um, it's not only a great place to live, it is a great place to work. Uh, the restaurants, the people. Um, I get questions every day, uh, whether it be from neighbors, from uh, friends, and even from strangers. And, and that's great, ask questions. I, I want you to ask questions. Um, if you don't feel comfortable uh, uh, to ask the question, we have a 24-hour response center uh, where we will uh, take your question into queue and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Our goal is to be transparent, accessible, and helpful. Um, we offer tours of our sites. Um, if you want to get, see what we do on a daily basis, come out, come see what we do. Um, see the people that actually work on these sites, uh, how hardworking they actually are. Um, we also hold town meeting, town hall meetings uh, at our office in Cecil um, to where you can come and talk to the, uh, the uh, individuals that are actually going to be overseeing those operations. So we are proud of our commitment to safety, uh, the environment, and the community. Uh, we have demonstrated the commitment in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, we recently signed a contract for an electric frack fleet to where if it would be quieter than me talking on this microphone, why we're actually doing our operations. Okay. 
Um, we disclose the chemicals in our fracture stimulation operations. Um, anybody can go to frackfocus.org and see what we are actually pumping. Um, our, production, our production facilities, they meet or exceed state and federal regulations. And we confirm proper operations with our FLIR program, which is completed quarterly. Uh, we complete zero emissions flowback. What does that mean? Well, no longer do we flare. No longer do we flow to open top tanks. And we have a standalone safety and environmental compliance department. We pride ourselves on our efficiencies. Our efficiencies are how fast we go and how safe we go. The faster we go, the faster we're done with an operation. Uh, not only is that better for the community, but it also saves us money. After 20 years in the industry, I've been with three companies, and I have fracked over 20,000 stages. <laughs> and I am older than I look, I'll tell you that. Um, we perform at the highest level. Uh, I'm proud to work for this, co this company, and also proud for the responsible de of natural gas development in this community. So thank you for allowing me the time to speak. And uh, we look forward to uh, a productive discussion related to uh, the new ordinance. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Warzinski, 111 Ashland Court. Uh, thank you for giving us the time today as residents to speak to the board and address this issue. Um, I won't go over uh, a lot of the different comments as they're already on the record. I guess I would just remind the board that this is a meeting about the ordinance uh, and the changes and the suggestions from the residents. I would like to submit for the record uh, a specific change and I'll just read it to you. It'll be easier that way. Changes in site plans or drilling pads or other compressor stations included but not limited to the expansion of ground surface area used and or devoted towards drilling operations requires a new conditional use approval pursuant to the terms and conditions of this section. So I'm not anti-drilling, I'm actually pro-safe drilling. I think there's a reasonable way we can get there, but I think it's important that as we see this development continue to occur in our township, that if, if they change what they decide to do once they come through here, that they should have to come back through here to make sure you are comfortable with what they're doing. It can't be sort of an open opportunity for them to do what they want once they get your stamp. That's what I would ask you to consider. Thank you. Hi there, I wasn't gonna speak, I was just here to really listen. My name is Colleen Miller, I'm from Windsor Woods, 2011, uh, Sir uh, Patrick Drive. Been there for about a year and a half, and the only thing I wanted to ask the board is, would it be prudent to consider anybody on the board that actually may have an investment, and sizable investments in property that are being considered or probably are already approved for some of this oil and gas. Um, I would like to see it go into the pockets of Cecil Township, not so much personal pockets. And I don't think anybody here really is objecting to the oil and gas. We just want to be safe, just like you folks. That's all it is. So um, please give it some consideration. We do uh, uh, like to have money coming into to the township any way, shape, or form, providing we are all kept safe and it's for the benefit of the people. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? No. Um, my name is Kanishka Ray. I live at 1005 Timber Run. If you could just hold it, yeah. 1005 talk. Timber Run. My name is Kanish Garay. I've lived in Cecil Township for 10 years. Um, uh, I, I came up here. I wasn't going to originally say anything, but the, the gentleman from Range Resources kind of piqued my interest. So I did a little Google search on my phone, and it took me about three or four entries on Google to find 
DEP orders range resources to fix leaking Marcellus well once and for all. This is from January 13th, 2020. I can go through and read this, but I think anybody here who's with Google on their phones can read this. So nobody's talked about when fracking goes wrong. So maybe I urge the residents if here who are- If you wouldn't mind, if you could address the board. Thank sure. you. I would like you to consider that, you know, perhaps there have been no accidents here in Cecil thus far, but given the track record of the companies that we're dealing with, and this is not the only incident, that that should be a large factor in any future ordinance changes. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Merle Lesko, 383 Coleman Road. Um, I do want to make one comment about uh, the gentleman from Range Resources. I have reached out to Range Resources during the time of the construction of the well pad, which my house was actually shaking all day while they're doing this with the roll tamper. So I reached out to them through their online resource. They referred me to a local rep who I called. His name was Bob Trubinsky, who referred me to another rep. His name was Kevin Mastrangelo which is a local guy who tried to befriend me and say, hey, we, I know your sister, I know this, I know that. And I said, my concerns are my house is vibrating. I homeschool two children at my house who have never been enrolled in school. I didn't just choose to do this yesterday. They've never been enrolled in the school. I've made it clear to this township that they are homeschooled. I am under 600 feet from the existing construction of the pad. When I reached out to them, they just said, oh, it will be okay, it'll be okay, it'll all go away soon. We're gonna be done with construction in a week or two. Three months later, it was still going on. Then, what I heard was, you know, if you got a problem with it, maybe we'll put you up in a hotel for a weekend or something, give you a break. That's not what I want. I want answers. The biggest thing, and why I'm bringing this up is, when I asked, both of those people that I spoke to on the phone and texted, have you been to this site to experience what I'm going through and what my family is going through? And they said, well, no, we haven't. I said, do you have any plans to go there? Well, no, we don't. We don't go to, to sites like that. That's just for the engineers. I said, so how can you tell me that it's going to be okay when you've never even been there? to experience what I'm going through. So the transparency that was put forth is really not there. And I can tell you firsthand, I've got phone records if we need to prove it and go through all this stuff. But there's the thing. They're not even there to, to see what I'm going through. They don't care what you're going through. They're not the ones that are going to be there. What they told me was, and, and the range guy said, we'll take you on a tour of a site after it's completed. <laughs> not wow, everything's going on. Not wow, all the noise is going on. After it's completed, sure, it looks like a field with a couple tanks in it. But that's what I got when I called range resources. And I want to add one more thing. That project went way over. And so if you look at all their planning, the little asterisk that says subject to weather, subject to whether we got to it or not, subject to, well, it might be a contractor didn't show up that day. So these plans that are going to take six to eight weeks went to six months, went to seven months. So the, when is the noise going to stop? Their plans are, are, are not set in stone. And I can't imagine when I'm going to have a, a nice summer day to barbecue less than 600 feet from activity that's going to go 24-7 for God knows how long. Because there's 14 wells that were approved for that site. Four are supposed to go in this year. How long is it going to be? And I won't have anything to do with it because my land won't be worth crap. Who's going to want to live and look at that and hear it all year long? Thank you.
Any other current township? Any other current township residents want to speak? Okay, we'll open it back up again for. A, oh, sorry. Back again. Nope. Sorry. Good evening. My name is John Swinsky. I reside at 183 Swinsky Road, McDonald, PA. Uh, my family's been in this township for over 100 years, and in that time, in that time frame, we have had shallow oil wells on our property. And the, the reason I'm speaking is because I'm for these wells, and my family, I'm the third generation, and I have kids, and we've played around them our entire lives. And to me, it didn't phase anyone. No one got sick in my family. No one's passed away from cancer. That being said, Pennsylvania is known for some of the best crude oil in the, in the world. A company named Brad Penn manufactures motor oil. And that also is in relation to the gas industry. And I wanted to bring that up because that comes from right where we originated in McDonald, PA. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. You can just come right down through the front. Hi, my name is Sharon Stankus. I reside at 162 Cecil Henderson Road. I've been here to several meetings, so I, I know most of you that you've seen me before. I uh, was born and raised on Cecil Henderson Road went to Houston, Texas for 36 years and came back to Cecil Township to that road, okay? Um, there's a lot of people here where, I, I, you know, I'm in this area is so different from where I came from. And what happened here is I see a unity. I mean, you're seeing people divided on this, but I see a lot of unity. Nobody cares if you're Democrat, if you're Republican. They don't care. They're, they're talking about people's health. And today, oh, I'm we sorry. Were Can now you talk a little louder into the microphone? Next time, just yell because I didn't, they can't hear you back there. Okay. We were today yeah. alone. If you, you just face us, just hold it closer to your Okay. Mouth. Pennsylvania was. We are now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and our surrounding area is the worst air in the nation. Today, this is what's come out. It's the worst air in the nation. You can Google that, and uh, I wanna tell you why this is so important to me. I don't know if anybody knows who George Mitchell is. Uh, George Mitchell, he was the guy who started all the fracking. He was a personal friend of mine in Houston. He was so upset. He, he was an environmentalist. He, he made all kinds of different uh, projects and housing developments in Houston with, with woods everywhere. You, you're not even allowed to have a sign. It, it's just trees are everywhere. It's, they're Mitchell developments. And he was so distraught that he started all of this. He started fracking. And when he died, before he died, he was so concerned that he had opened Pandora's box. So we have all got to work together. We can't put this back in the box. Everyone knows that we've all, uh, we've all benefited from all of the uh, range resources and, and all the other oil and gas industries. Yes, we've all benefited. But we've got to find a way to change the ordinance or, or somebody becoming... Uh, having a happy medium on this because what is risk is we just don't want to be the number one for that reason in the United States that we have the worst air quality. So we're just begging you to try and, and get together and listen to everyone in regard to this. But nobody wants to stop the fracking. When George died, he says it'll never be uh, stopped. But it has to be controlled, and that's all they're asking. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Good 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity to speak. My name is Diana Lewandowski. I live on Klinger Road in Cecil Township. I've lived there for over 35 years now. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I commend anyone in this township who gives their time to, to this community. I'm not one of you for whatever reasons, but I'm grateful to have all of you here. <clears throat> I know you put your hearts, your think tanks, your, your families into consideration when you make your decisions on a weekly and monthly basis. I have grandchildren in this township and I love them dearly. And I bought a farm here 35 years ago with my husband and it's been a joy to raise children there. Um, as much as I don't want to see it go away, it's part of my retirement. And if gas and oil doesn't stay in the community, I will probably have to, I hate to say this, but sell to some developer so that I can leave my grandchildren something that I've worked very hard for. Um, what I've heard tonight, and I think to sum it up, I, I care deeply about the people that have lost children to these cancers. Um, I care about the people who have decided to make their homes and retire in this community because it is such a great place. But I also believe that we have two groups here who need to work a heck of a lot closer together to make this work. We have a gold mine in this county. And for us to, for it to end up the way that it should, with people who stay here and support this community. And personally, if I ever hit the lottery, I would love to give something back to this community. I might not be able to do that today, but someday I might. And so the decisions that we make today um, can have a big bearing on helping our township move forward in the future. Um, I don't want to get rich on gas and oil, but by the same token, I feel like I've paid taxes for a lot of years, and I think maybe my grandchildren are entitled to something that I never had an opportunity to have. So, you know, if some of us, if the few of us in this township are fortunate enough to, to, to profit off of it, call it greed, call it what you want, but we could be the very people that give back in the end. And thanks again for your work. Good evening. My name is Dustin Kish. I reside at 2006 Sir Patrick Drive in the Windsor. Could Woods you Paddy. hold the microphone and, and speak? Sorry. I sure can. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come out here and speak. And I'd like to ask you for a few things. I want to ask you for time and distance. Those two things are interrelated. I live, it's been well documented in the state of today, I live about 600 feet from a new well pad. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that my heat works and my lights come on, but I also understand that accidents do happen. Time and distance protects people. If we move these well pads and these drilling sites further away, it gives us more time to deal with accidents that happen and more distance away from anything that comes out of the ground that could be harmful to us. That being said, I lost my train of thought. I'm a little nervous standing here talking too. It's a little intimidating Take your time. in this room. What was my other point? I guess I'll wrap up with that since I can't remember my other point. <laughs> Diane, hold on one second. So before we move on to um, anyone else, I'm going to open it up to anyone who has a child in Cannon McMillan School District that would attend a CECL or to any other individual who likes to speak before we have people come back up for a second time. Is someone's phone playing? <laughs> All right, go ahead, Diana. Oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you. 
Um, my name is Lisa Graves Marcusi. I'm a lifelong resident of the Mon Valley, and I have worked uh, for 10 years for an environmental nonprofit called the Environmental Integrity Project. We help communities like yours, and we're in the process of helping a number who are updating their oil and gas ordinance. Um, I want to commend you. I think it's been said. I want to commend you and the other local officials who are taking this important step. There have been a lot of lessons learned over the years. Um, fracking and, and the oil and gas infrastructure has been here for about a decade now. And initially, when industry came to town, there were a lot of promises made. And we're a very trusting lot here in Western Pennsylvania. And we believed that. And for some people, those narratives came true. But for some, they did not. And so there are a couple things that I want to just point out to you, just as you're taking, undertaking this. There are rules of the road that we now all know. And you've heard it mentioned here tonight. The MPC is one of them. The other, not reinventing the wheel, using other examples from other communities, valuable information. But there are two other pieces of information I want to leave with you. The first thing is, I don't know how many of you are aware that currently the Pennsylvania Attorney General has undertaken a criminal investigation of the oil and gas operations in western Pennsylvania, some of them specific to Washington County. That has in, in, entailed the impaneling of a grand jury. We don't know when that report will be made final, but if and when it's made final and it shows that there were serious enough mistakes that were made that rose to the level of the Attorney General convening a criminal investigation about damages to the Commonwealth, that means to me that local governance becomes the very important frontline defense. Your local land use issues will become the number one issue, the number one variable in protecting public health, safety, and welfare. Now, you've heard it here said tonight that industry says that they're a good neighbor and they're always in compliance. Let me tell you firsthand account. A few years ago, I was called as a witness before the United States Department of Justice for an investigation that involved the criminal investigation of the US EPA as well as the DOJ of Mark West and their operations in West, Western Pennsylvania and, and Southeastern Ohio. It resulted in a very large fine. The, the findings came out, and I can send them to you if you want, um, in April of 2018, I believe. And it resulted in a federal consent decree, which means they have to go back and do certain things under federal jurisdiction. They have to go back and re-permit about 200 of their facilities that the, the United States government believed they violated the Clean Air Act. So when industry says that they're highly regulated, and industry says that they want to be a good neighbor, I think they want to be, but I think mistakes happen. I think problems have occurred. I think problems will continue to occur, but I think the smart thing to do is what you're doing, is to take a moment to pause, to reflect, to take the lessons learned, use that information to make wise decisions to protect your community now and in the future. I think this is an important crossroads, and I know I'm working with some of the citizens here. We welcome the opportunity to work with you, to fact check, to do research, whatever it might take, so that it is done in a reasonable and safe way. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Make you say it. Um, hi, I'm Veronica. I'm the executive director of the Center for Coalfield Justice. We have about um, 20 plus residents in Cecil Township that are members of our organization, many of whom have already spoke tonight. So just want to reiterate a lot of what you heard from your residents and to take their guidance. Um, also wanted to touch a little bit on 
the economic stability of the industry. We heard a lot about jobs and the need to protect our economy and how oil and gas is a driver in our local economic future. But yet we've been seeing reports coming from a lot of these Fortune 500 companies of how they're downgrading their assets in Appalachia. Chevron is completely pulling out of Appalachia in many instances. CNX has downgraded their assets of oil and gas drilling in Appalachia. And it's becoming very, very more clear that they're, they're lobbying heavily for corporate giveaways and public subsidies to sustain their ongoing growth and development. And so if we want to protect the future development of a township, I think we also should be researching the economic stability of these industries moving forward. And then there also were comments about violations and things that have happened in the past. And in Cecil Township, there, have, there has not been a drill well head um, necessarily in the township, but there have been ancillary support industries or support to oil and gas operations, and those have had violations on them. There was the World Star impoundment that was holding waste in it, and there were lots of violations from the DEP for it. I kind of came up here. I don't. I could get the exact numbers to the township, and I do want to reiterate what folks have said before: the responsibility of township supervisors for the health, welfare, and safety of our residents. And I think so often. Um, industry frequently comes in and threatens boards with lawsuits. And it's a very real threat, costs lots of money, litigation is not cheap. Um, but at the same time, residents can also sue boards as well. And so we need to, one of the things when we've done work on holding fossil fuel companies accountable to the existing laws and regulations is working with these environmental justice communities, these well, folks that yeah. deserve. I'm going to just interrupt for a second. So if you could keep it specific to our ordinance and changes to our ordinance, I'd appreciate that. We have no control over a board of investigating the economic viability of a company that can never factor into our decision so just if you could focus on you know I would, changes yeah. specific to the ordinance i would appreciate it i Thanks. would reiterate the comments that folks made about the three thousand plus setbacks from residents there was some people said a three thousand foot setback from residents is what EHP recommends is the way to keep the health of residents safe, as well as the other key factor is seeing the whole operation before, you know, if the one part of the permit comes in asking the operator for the whole plan of the operation in the future. For instance, where's the gas line going to go when they ask for the well permit so you can know how future development can happen in the township. And we'll, we'll submit more comments that are very targeted to the ordinance in writing to you all as well, too. Thank you. Thank you. I would just ask that as you are getting up to speak, especially if you're outside the Cecil Township community, that you keep in mind that tonight we're here to discuss changes to the ordinance. So um, setbacks, for kind of explain it in a simple way, we can dictate the where, so where it's located, that is allowed under the MPC. We cannot dictate the how. So how they drill or um, how, whether it's electric or gas, we can't really say that. So just keep that in mind when you're speaking so that it is something that actually um, we c is something that we can consider. Sorry. Hi, can I talk now? <laughs> okay, thanks. I didn't mean to interrupt your process. And I certainly appreciate the fact that you folks are here tonight for your residents. That, that means a lot, I'm sure, to your constituents. Um, I am a newly elected council member in Jefferson Hills. I greatly apologize for my attire. <laughs> I'm a basketball coach and I am sweaty and I just came from practice, so bear with me. You're fine. Um, it is a big undertaking. We, we're going through the same process in Jefferson Hills and I just wanted to open lines of communications between your township and our borough. Um, you can go on the webpage and get my information. My name is Nicole Rosito. Um, I just wanted to remind you, though, most importantly, of your fiduciary duty to the health, safety, and welfare of your constituents. And you have difficult choices to make, but I'm sure that you can make the right ones. Thanks for having this today. Thank you. And sorry for making you sit down the first time. Oh, it's okay. Anyone else? Okay, Diane. Diane Ritz Nicolala, 4004 Sir James Drive. Um, I agree with 
a lot of the people here. You do have to find a happy medium. And I think uh, the Augustine Well site is going to be a uh, bellwether. It's going to let you know how invasive this industry can be. And without any kind of um, setbacks or changes in the ordinances, it may scale, scare away people, residents. Um, South Fayette is very stringent, and they are booming. Take a look at them. Do you want people here that are going to live here? Or do you want just the taxes from the industry? Um, in Janu or July of 2019, Range Resources had an open house for our neighborhood. And um, there were probably 30 people there or more. And they were giving us all the rhetoric. Um, Laura Zimba, I think that's her last name. She, we were talking to her and she said, oh, I understand how you feel. And if I were you, I would be fighting too. And she's a range resource person, PR person. So um, they understand, but they still want to make the money. So please look at um, all of the aspects of this for the industry as well as for the residents. You're tax paying voting residents. And it's a growing community. You can see that with um, Traditions of America and McConnell's Trails. And there are many other areas. And I think we're going to find that the roads to a, a fracking site have got to be industrial roads. They can't be North de Paoli going under a train trestle, which is deteriorating every day. Please listen to everybody. Thank you. I have some packets for you. Thank you. Go ahead. Ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you have to kind of hold it like to yeah. your mouth. Is that better? Yep. <laughs> um, my name is Lois Bauer Bjornsson, and um, I live in Scenery Hill, Pennsylvania. I am with Clean Air Council, and um, I sit on the board at Center for Coastal Justice. Um, what I see as I look around this room is what I see in many communities that I work in. I work with some residents here in Cecil. I'm well. actually going to stop you just because there's already been somebody that spoke from Center for Coalfield Justice. There is a resident behind you. So if we have time at the end, but I don't want... I, I wouldn't I, allow the residents to speak just because we've had somebody already. No, that's fine. That, that's fine. I, I was going to speak on behalf of Clean Air Council, but she can go first, too. I just yeah. was saying that I Thank you. sit with her. That's fine. No big deal. He did offer, but I said go ahead. Uh, that's okay. I'm just trying to give actual residents the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. And thank you for the opportunity tonight. If, I, Julie, if you could hold it and then say your name. Oh, although I just said it for you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Julie Devano, and I live on Grange Road. And I apologize if I'm not as super prepared as some of the other people who, who spoke you, very you well. Can you hold it like? Yeah, right here. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm not used to this. Um, but I'm not as super prepared. I was just kind of sitting back and listening. But some of the things struck me that I just kind of wanted to address that other people will say, were saying. Um, you know, I think these ordinances are very important to ensure the health and safety of our residences, and that's why so many people are interested. Um, and it just struck me as, you know, I'm listening to everyone, that every person kind of speaking in favor for the industry has some kind of financial stake in the process. Um, I can't think of one that got up and didn't say, I'm a leaseholder, or I work there, or I make my livelihood there. Um, so I just want you to really listen to the residents that um, really want to protect their families and not their pocketbooks, as so often the industry supporters do. Um, you've heard tonight from the industry supporters, they reference their right to earn money from their land. Um, it's certainly been stated on some of the pro-drilling, like, social media sites. Um, I don't know who runs them. They're anonymous. But, you know, I've even often heard them say, they, you know, they slant and say that only people that can't benefit from the drilling are against it. Well, on the flip side, it's a red flag to me if the only people that can benefit are for it. Um, there's a lot of causes I support that I'm not going to gain financially from. Animal rescue, mothers against drunk driving. We're not going to 
benefit financially from those with their important causes. I haven't heard one person stand up and support this that isn't financially benefiting. So I just want you to take that under your consideration. Um, some, of the, some of the details in the ordinance, I did read it. I'm not a very techie person. I'm a mom here and a resident. Um, I'm an accountant. Um, but some of the things in the ordinance itself that I just had kind of made some notes looking at it was that um, some of the th things are very general. They say that, um, like, there's one in Section 3 in the zoning. It says that it should be, there should be a safety zone. It doesn't say what that is. It doesn't define it, and it doesn't say what criteria will be based on. It just says it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I think a safe zone is probably one not in a residential drilling, not, not in a residential area, but we need, like, strict data points for that so that compliance can be measured. Right now, if you put that in there, these general terms, you can't measure it. There's one in dust control, which I think dust is probably the least of the concerns of this community, but it's, it just says that um, it mentions appropriate dust control. And this, this is kind of the tone throughout the ordinance, but I think we need to look at you know, really quantifying these data points so that the, the monitoring and compliance can be regulated. And just to tap on what some other people said, um, that you know, when we have the, looking at other ordinances, I think is a great idea. It's saying to look at studies. I think it's very important that these studies are not industry done studies, that they're third party, um, outside, unbiased opinions. Um, I work and have worked for a long time. I work on writing grant proposals. And I'm going to bring up another topic that I know is a hot topic, but only for one reason. I think we can learn from it. Um, we're all familiar with the ABB property issue going on, and I think all of us would love to see it cleaned up. I think the discord comes in on who's going to pay for that and how much is it going to be, and could it, in effect, bankrupt the community? Um, but we're looking at, you know, people. some people say, that well, there are grants out there to clean it up. Well, grants are not a given. It's a very competitive process. I work on writing them. More grants are denied when you apply for them than are awarded. So just applying doesn't mean that you're going to get them. And also, any industry grant in any industry, not just this one, any industry-funded grant, they're done through that industry's legal counsel so that if that industry doesn't like the results, they're never going to see the light of day. So you have to keep that in mind and make sure that it's all third-party monitoring. Um, let's see. Oh, people talked about, too, you know, the development of housing plans. People are for that. Well, that doesn't emit benzene and cancer-causing carcinogens like we see a lot of times with the fracking or is out there. Um, and I just want you to, you know, think about when you're doing this, you know, a lot of people talked about all the technical things. They're very more well-versed than I am. You know, please consider those. But, you know, we need you to put the regulations in place that will eliminate the dangerous environmental consequences. Now we have the opportunity to prevent another disastrous site like the ABB property. We're trying to clean that up after the fact. We have the opportunity now to prevent something disastrous from happening. So I, happening. So I hope that you'll consider that and take those steps. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Pigford, Brookside Drive. Um, I am for drilling if it's done under the right conditions. I do not own mineral rights okay. for anything. Let's bring it down just I a talk minute. loud anyway. I do not own any mineral rights anywhere. I do not own the mineral rights under my own home, but I know what's under my home is a coal mine, which can collapse at any minute. Now, we have no ordinance on the old coal mines that are sitting within the township. And most of the homes in Cecil Township are sitting on top of coal mines. And I just think there should be a happy medium. It needs to be reasonable. If we're allowing all these housing plans to go in, we have to allow for that in the township base, but we also have to allow for the businesses to be able to come into the base. I, and you, it can be done healthy to the welfare of the people, but you have to do a happy medium. You can't just say, well, oh, no, we don't want it, and just forget about it. There's a lot to consider, and I just ask that you take your time and go over, review it, and don't go with information you find on Google, because I've done research on Google, and half of it is wrong. But research through the proper channels, and I know they keep bringing up South Fayette. I don't live in South Fayette. 
I, we don't have the same land span that they have. We don't have the businesses they have. So it's, to me, that's comparing apple and oranges. We have to do what's best for Cecil Township and Cecil Township alone. And I ask that you just take your time and find a consensus medium so that everybody can live with what decisions you make. Uh, Josh Stillmark, 40 North DePauly. I wasn't going to speak, but like a lot of other residents here, I was uh, kind of compelled to after hearing some of the comments. So first of all, thank, thank you very much. I know this is a monumental decision. Um, you're investing a lot of your own time into this. And um, I just want to thank you for, um, for putting this together. So just a couple notes. Um, you know, there, there's been some mention about um, he hearing what the industry has to say um, about moving forward, how we write these um, policies. Quite frankly, I, I really don't care what the industry has to say. Um, you really need to look at the residents here and first and foremost, protect them. Protect all the residents, their health and, and well-being, and the leaseholders so that they're getting what they're, what they're owed in a safe way. Um, so both sides need to be protected. Um, and while we can't, you know, there's a, there's a study going on right now about the cancer cluster. The results probably, most likely, won't be available to you uh, before you make a decision. Um, but there is data that we can use now, such as, you know, blast radius of, of a failed well, well site. That's well within 500 feet. Um, so you can use these data points to, to make a decision. Um, and lastly, you know, I mean, my life now consists of buying a Geiger counter to go outside and test the radioactivity of my backyard because the well site is so close to my house. I bought an air quality monitor that I look at several times a day. I, I, I'm scared when my kids go outside now, to be quite honest with you. So the, the point I'm, I just want to emphasize is please, you know, when you're making a decision, Please focus on the safety and well-being of, of the residents. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tracy Saber. I live in Windsor Woods, um, uh, the Scarbazy patio homes. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but. Um, I decided to come up here because you said you wanted to hear from the residents. And um, I guess I'm in the mi minority in this room. I don't want fracking anywhere near where I live. Um, I don't think there's enough health studies to support that um, it's not de detrimental to your health. Um, and until those studies um, have been produced. I don't want to see fracking 500 feet. I don't want to see it 10,000 feet from my home. And so I'm asking you to do the responsible thing of putting a moratorium on drilling until you can be assured that the residents of this community are not going to be impacted health-wise by drilling and fracking in this community. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak this evening? Any comments by the board members? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. No. Sorry about that. So, again, my name is Lois Bauer Bjornsson, and I do live in Scenery Hill. And I'm with Clean Air Council, and I'm speaking, um, uh, and actually as an impacted resident, my home's surrounded by 38 well pads. The closest is 1,000 feet from my home. My children's had, children have had health impacts from this. Um, I'm the girl that gives the tours. Um, I would love for you to come out and see the other side of oil and gas. I have friends that work in industry. I have friends that have been severely impacted by industry. Um, I have noticed some people in the room that I have invited out on tours that have not taken me up on it. I'm not really sure why. Um, 
again, I hear this from a lot of the residents in the room, and I do work with some residents here. Um, the sad thing that I see is I see this divide, this constant divide. Um, it's money, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. And as we all know, industry is on decline right now. And I can show you the other side of it as well. I think that's one of the saddest things is the divide that I see within communities. I hear people snickering when people are talking about children that have been sick and dying and laugh and giggle and things like that. It's really unfortunate. Um, I, I, I implore you to, to please um, come and visit some of the communities that I've worked in that have had an extreme lack of zoning or no zoning and that were targeted directly because of that and that industry ran all over them. And then I get phone calls and say, what can I do? And so we're backing up and we're behind the eight ball. So again, please listen to your residents and remember your responsibility as a board. Um, and, and, and please take into consideration their health and their well-being, and it will eventually affect you as well. And come and see the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Darlene Barney, 980 Cannonsburg. We've heard a lot from this coal, the Center for Coalfield Justice. Why weren't they here at our meetings whenever we were talking about ABB? They brought up the Darlene, ABB. Darlene, wait a no, minute. No, stop. The, no, you stop. stop. This right is not there. about ABB. This is not they about up Center. ABB. No. They're the cold Darlene, field justice. Darlene, I'm going to ask you to stop. This is not about ABB. This is not about the Center for I'm Cold Not saying field it was justice. about ABB. They brought it up, not us, not me. If you have a comment about the ordinance, we will listen to it. Otherwise, I'm going to ask you to sit back down. Please. Okay, I do have a comment about the ordinance. Thank you. Let's all work together on this the same way as we did the comprehensive plan. Let's get our group together. Let's work together. In our ordinance, as far as I'm concerned, with everything that is going on, so much building in the township, we can't expect to have any drilling if we do the setbacks further than what they are right now, where it's state law of 500 feet. 2,000 feet from schools, 500 feet from the homes, residents. I feel that that's been state law for a long time. Let's work together, let's get the group together, and let's be, why are you shaking your head? I wasn't. Okay. I'm just saying that. I'm writing down what you said. You want a group together. Yes, definitely. Got it. Comprehensive plan, we had a group. Let's get a group together with this, uh, the gas and oil, and work on it. Work on it together. I think that's the point of this. Pardon me? I think that's the point of this. Well, okay. Let's get it together like we did the comprehensive plan. Thanks to Eric. He's the one that got it together, started it. Let's get gas and oil together. That's what this is. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Kara Sheridan, 58 North DePauly. Um, with all due respect, I, I would uh, encourage the Board of Supervisors to act quickly on this. Not to take six months, which by the way, we still don't have a comprehensive plan, and I participated in those planning sessions as well. Six months worth of work, we still don't have a comprehensive plan, but my point is, if we don't do something now, all that, that range is gonna do is gonna come in and put more applications through for more well pads before the, the, the ordinances can get revised. We have to be, this has to be reacted to urgently. We have to do things quickly. If we don't, then that ship has sailed. And then we're, these old people are lost in the flood. They're gone, we're done, like we are. So my, my point here is, we have to move quickly. You know, every, I know everything in local government takes a long time, but if we sit here and put together workshops and we work for six or eight months till everybody's happy, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be, satisfactory to what the majority of the people who stood up here tonight talked about. 
we're not going to be protecting the safety and well-being of, of, of everyone in this township. So I would re respectfully request that you move quickly on this and we come to some sort of resolution as fast as possible. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no one else that wants to speak, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you for coming this evening. There will be more um, workshops and hearings, so look for them to be advertised in the very near future. Thank you. You just saw her. I just looked up her.